Why is FNAF fan games so popular? When a game grows in popularity, it will usually create a very loyal and cool fan base slash community. And over time, this community will do many things to grab the attention of many people who have not played the game, like do fan art, cosplay, make a YouTube video, or just go on other gaming forums to just straight talk about the game. But one particular thing that a few people in this fan base would do is create a fan game. Over the years, there have been many indie games that just straight up killed it with the reviews, getting literal praises from everywhere across the world. Some of which of these indie games have actually done way better than most AAA title games, which uh, releases a lot for the future of gaming. A few good examples are Hello Neighbor, Bendy and the Ink Machine, Baldi's Basics, and many more. As a matter of fact, a few of the most recent games that have the spotlight right now is Garden of Ban Ban. Which, if I were to explain more about the game's spotlight, let's just say it's, uh, it's not doing too well. But a game that is doing well is Poppy Playtime, a game that seems to be inspired from other games like Bendy and Ink Machine and just keep this trend of keeping things mascot whore. But one game, one indie game that's still growing to this day both in popularity and games is Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, I feel like at this point, everyone who plays games and everyone who don't knows what Five Nights at Freddy's is all about. It has a very simple mechanic system where you use cameras to locate the, you know, killer animatronics and use the resources available to survive until 6am, which resource wise is not really a lot. I mean, you have doors and a camera, so yeah, it's not really a lot to go on. Anyway, the game came out years ago and to this day has a pretty good track record in the popularity in the in-game community. I mean, that is until Security Breach, but uh, we don't talk about that. I made a whole video about that and I'm not about to open that whole can of worms again. Now, one of the reasons this game grew to popularity has to be the fan games made. If you were to go on the websites like itch.io or GameJolt, you would see the floodgate of many different fan games that were all inspired by Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, this is a very common thing to happen when an indie game goes big. Many people want a slice of the original idea, but extend it to their own in making, whether it's expanding the story, the mechanics, or just creating something completely new and original, but at the same time, keeping the mechanics of the original game. A very good example of this is Undertale. When the game first dropped, there were dozens of fan games that expanded on the story of Undertale, either expanding it from the game ending or deciding to change the main story perspective to other characters like Sans or Flowey. There were even a few fan games that had a multiplayer mode where you can fight bots along with your friends using the attacks that were shown in the original game. Now, when the hype for the game died down a bit, so did the fan games, and that's usually what happens. But seeing how Five Nights at Freddy's is actually a game series, rather than it just being one single game, there would be this constant flood of new fan games being made. There was always the question lingering in my head though for a while now. Other than the fact that FNAF is a game series, so there's always going to seem to be some new game that comes out every two years or so, but why is it that FNAF fan games are still so popular all these years later? Well, you see, it's come down to a numerous of reasons of why FNAF fan games are so popular. Over the 9 years Five Nights at Freddy's has been a thing in the gaming community, it's managed to bring a new element to the horror game community, with its hidden lore that, you know, to this day has never really been confirmed other than people just like creating theories like MatPat, the simple mechanics of the game using cameras and doors without really moving the character, but also the pretty much creating a sort of trend in the genre that is called mascot whore. This is the sort of new thing, at least for me and many others, where they use this very children theme for the game, like a kid's pizzeria or an animal animatronic, and make it in a very scary and nightmarish way. This brought a lot of attention to the game and got a lot of people playing it. And the fact that there was three more games made so close to each other brought up the popularity. FNAF fan games uh, vary in terms of gameplay and story, but the general flow for the fame formula from the original game. Players are tasked with surviving a certain number of nights at a location, usually a pizzeria, restaurant, or a similar establishment, while avoiding animatronic characters that are hunting you and trying to kill you, the player. One of the most popular FNAF fan games is Five Nights at Candy. This game features a new set of animatronic characters that are not related to the original FNAF games, as well as a unique setting and storyline. 
In Five Nights at Candy's, uh, the story of the game is you taking the role of a security guard who must survive five nights in an abandoned restaurant called Candy's Burgers and Fries. The restaurant's animatronic mascot, Candy the Cat, and Cindy the Cat have been malfunctioning and have been behaving strangely, and you the player must keep a watchful eye on them to prevent them from attacking. The game mechanics are very similar to the original FNAF game, with the player monitoring the animatronics through security cameras and using doors and lights to keep them at bay. However, Five Nights at Candy's offers its own unique challenges and scares with the animatronics behaving unpredictably ways and setting the features for its own unique hazard and obstacle. The game has spawned a series of sequels including Five Nights at Candy's 2, Five Nights at Candy's 3, and Five Nights at Candy's Remastered. Each game adds a new animatronic, mechanic, and storyline to the franchise, and they become a popular among fans of the horror and Five Nights at Freddy genre. The game has been praised for its well-designed animatronics and challenging gameplay. Another popular FNAF fan game is The Joy of Creation Reborn. The Joy of Creation Reborn is another fan game based by a FNAF franchise. It was created by a fan known as Nixon and was first released in 2016. The game features a unique setting and storyline as well as a new set of new animatronic characters that are not related to the of course original FNAF games. In the Joy of Creation Reborn, the player takes on the role as a character named Scott who is trapped inside their own house. The house is haunted by a group of animatronics known as the Ignited, who are all on a mission to hunt down and kill Scott of course. The players must navigate through the dark and creepy house, avoiding the animatronics and completing various objectives in order to survive. The game features a unique gameplay mechanic where the player must manage their flashlight battery and keep it in charge in order to see in the dark. The ignited can only be seen when the player is in the line of sight, and they move quickly and unpredictably, making it difficult to avoid them. The game's graphics and sound design are also top notch, and the detailed environments and terrifying sound effects add to the game's horror atmosphere. The game is known for its intense and terrifying gameplay and has been praised for its graphics and sound designs. Other notable FNAF fan games include White Knights at Flumpy's, Day Ships at Freddy's, and Fred Bear and Fred's Left to Rot. FNAF fan games are a testament to the creativity and dedication of the game's fan base. While some fan games are more successful than others, they all demonstrate the passion and love that fans have for this franchise. Five Nights at Freddy's fan games have become popular for a variety of reasons, and here are some of the factors that may contribute to its popularity. First is the creativity. FNAF fan games allow fans to express their creativity and ideas by creating their own animatronics, their own settings, and their own storyline. This level of creativity freedom can be appealing to fans who want to put their own spin on the FNAF franchise. Then of course there's a passion. FNAF fans are often very passionate about the franchise and fan games are a way of them to show their love and appreciation for the games. Many fans spend countless hours creating and playing fan games and this level of dedication can create a strong sense of a community and can moderate a strong fan base. And then there's of course the challenges. FNAF fan games often offer challenging gameplay that require quick reflexes and strategic thinking. This level of difficulty can be very satisfying for players who enjoy a good challenge. FNAF fan games offer players new experiences within the FNAF universe. While the original FNAF games are certainly scary and thrilling, fan games can often a different of type of scare as well as a new setting characters and storyline. Accessibility. FNAF fan games are often available for free, they download online, which means accessibility is to a wide audience. This accessibility allows fans from all over the world to enjoy and create fan games. Overall, FNAF fan games have become popular because they allow fans to express their creativity, passion, and love for the franchise in a new and exciting way. They offer a unique experience and challenges that can be appealing to players who are looking for something different from the original games. Now, the FNAF fan games community is a thriving and active community that is dedicated to creating and playing fan-made games inspired by the original Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. This community is made up of players, game developers, and content creators who share a passion for a horror genre and the FNAF universe. One of the defying characteristics of the FNAF fan games community is its creativity. 
fan of the franchise have created hundreds of fan games, each with their own unique characters, settings, and storylines. These games range from a faithful reincarnation of the FNAF games to a completely original game that expands on the lore of the franchise. The community is also known for its collaborative spirits. Many Five Nights at Fan games are created by teams of developers who work together to create something that is greater than the sum of its parts. Fans are also collaborate with each other by creating and sharing fan art, fan fiction, and other type of content. Another important aspect of FNAF fan games community is its dedication to quality. Many fan games are created with the attention of detail, including custom made graphics, sound effects, and music. This level of quality is important to fans as it allows them to fully immerse themselves in the world of the game and the experience that scares and thrills that the franchise is known for. There's also the fact that there are content creators, mainly YouTubers, whose channels is dedicated to mainly FNAF related things. And there are many other channels that do this where if they're a gaming channel, they stick to one game particularly and that they like. A good example of this is Minecraft or Grand Theft Auto. But seeing how there's only so much you can do in those games, these YouTubers would shake things up with mods or challenges to make it more fun and for original content for viewers watching them. Now, many channels have actually gone under over the years after doing this and sticking to one game, but many have actually thrived, like YouTubers like Doko, whose channels are dedicated to showing as much FNAF as possible. As a matter of fact, 95% of their channel is all FNAF related. And seeing how there's only so many FNAF games and there's only so many times you can play it, they would also play a lot of FNAF fan games. With channels like theirs that keep showing fan related content for Five Nights at Freddy's, opening a whole new door for many who have not played it game or heard of the game series, which is honestly a pretty cool thing. There's also the fact that there's actually thousands upon thousands of FNAF fan games. So even when there's no more Five Nights at Freddy's games being made, and trust me that will happen eventually, there will still be thousands upon thousands of FNAF related fan games keeping you entertained even when the series is officially done. Now, because there have been so many relatively cool FNAF fan games, some people have sparked up this debate that FNAF fan games are more better than the original ones. Now obviously if Five Nights at Freddy's never became a game, there would be no fan games. But in game mechanics and other game traits, I think this is a pretty good debate. It's difficult to say whether FNAF fan games are better than the original FNAF games because it ultimately comes down to personal preference. Both the original FNAF games and fan games offer a unique and compelling experience that appeals to different types of player. The original FNAF games created by Scott Coffin have a unique and iconic style with a creepy atmospheric setting, jump scares, and a simple but effective gameplay mechanic. These games have a strong following and have spawned a successful franchise, including merchandise, books, and even a movie adaptation on its way. On the other hand, FNAF fan games offer a more diverse range of experience with often pushing the boundaries of what is possible within the FNAF universe. Fan games often introduce new mechanics, new characters, and storylines that can be both refreshing and terrifying. They also provide a platform for fans to express their creativity for the love of the franchise. One advantage that FNAF fan games have that's better than the original FNAF games is the ability to explore different aspects of the FNAF universe. While the original games are limited to the perspective of the security guard or a child, FNAF fan games can explore the perspective of other characters, such as the animatronics themselves or employees of the pizzeria. This allows for a wider range of storytelling and character development, which can make the game more immersive and engaging. Additionally, FNAF fan games often have a higher degree of difficulty and complexity than the original games, which can appeal to players who enjoy more challenging games. Fan games are often introduced new mechanics and obstacles such as a different way for the animatronics to move or new tools for players to use, which can make the game more difficult but also more rewarding to play. Finally, FNAF fan games offer a community driven experience that can be more interactive and collaborative than playing the original games alone. Fan games often have an active online communities where players can share tips, tricks, and strategies, as well as create and share their own content such as fan art, videos, and mods. This sense of a community can make the games more enjoyable and can add to this overall experience of playing the games. Overall, FNAF fan games offer unique and viable contribution to the FNAF franchise. While they may not be better than the original FNAF games, they offer a diverse range of experience and perspective that can appeal to different types of players. 
Whether you are a fan of the original games or a fan of the fan games, there's no denying that FNAF franchise has captured the imagination of millions of players around the world. To really sum up this video, I think it's safe to say that until this game series ends officially, there's going to be dozens of different FNAF fan games coming out every now and then. And I think it's safe to say that the reason FNAF fan games are so popular is because of the great community behind the game. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next video, Bye bye